and welcome back. I just want to do a quick refresher of the capabilities of Health and Predict. So jumping into it, this module of Maximo is focused on the role of a reliability engineer. And so these engineers are typically challenged when conducting health calculations, root cause analysis, by not having to gather or by having to gather the key information manually to run these type of exercises. And so I even have a few clients today where it takes weeks for them to collect key information such as operational data, work order history, run hours, age of the equipment, inspections, all and gather them all into one single pane of glass. So once clients have a strategy of bringing that information to Maximo is when we see them begin to adopting machine learning techniques within our predict application. So we'll walk through some of the models and visualizations that we have uh, for that as part of this demonstration. So here we're going to have a reliability engineer uh, log in to Core Maximo. And here we now have access to all the different modules within Maximo's toolbox. But the most, the module that I use the most as a reliability engineer is the health and predict module. So right off the bat, I'm going to be presented with all the assets that I'm responsible for in my day to day, along with how they're performing. As a reliability engineer, I want to begin my day filtering this list by high priority assets, uh, such as filtering by those with low health and addressing those who need attention the most. And so let's say, for example, uh, that we're also applying machine learning. We'll see the days that failure populate and we'll be able to filter based off that as well. But for this scenario, let's just say that the supervisor uh, issued a request to me to identify root cause for a particular asset class. So here at the top, we have different queries that we pull from Maximo in order to be able to do that. Now, once we've completed our filter, we can then begin to drill into some further out of the box capabilities within the health and predict application. And this includes being able to spatially represent our assets on a map. And as we scroll in, we can see uh, to the assets located in different directions that myself as a reliability engineer are responsible for, especially in industries where you need to identify trends on the map where potentially you could find out a source where a lot of the issues on your pieces of equipment are occurring. Uh, we oftentimes see the spatial part of health being leveraged, especially within the utility space. Now, the next uh, component of this that we're gonna talk about is some of the out of the box analysis that come with this. As I mentioned before, gathering all these informations and calculating these performance indicators out of the box is really important for liability engineers to do their day to day. And here we can see a couple of those out of the box uh, KPIs that are automatically generated from the data coming in. Here we can look across to see the health of different assets within this class, those that are in good, bad, fair condition. At the bottom, we can see those that have a failure rate per manufacturer and the unplanned downtime per month. Oftentimes as a reliability engineer, we wanna be able to also build a matrix in which we can map out, okay, across how important versus what's the risk of this asset on the graph. And this helps us prioritize which bad actors to focus on as part of our day-to-day. -day. Now, let's say, for example, we wanna focus in on a specific asset that fits within a certain category. Here we have something within Maximal Cone Work Queues, which we more often than not see reliability teams using. This gives you information such as what are those assets that are failing for the next preventive maintenance? What are those assets that are low health? And just as importantly, at the bottom, what am I missing as far as data to feed my calculations? And this is where we can spend a lot of time working with our teams to gathering the information that we need 
to, to power our calculations and models that we leverage as part of root cause analysis. And Maximo is telling me here, uh, a part of this process, that we're missing information that we need. So now that we have a breakdown of those assets that are failing to prevent the next preventive maintenance, these are the assets that for this demonstration are the highest priority for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill into them to begin conducting root cause analysis. And we'll use this uh, pump 001 to do that. This is the screen that as a reliability engineer, I get the most value out of, I would say, across the application and that all of my key performance indicators are listed automatically at the top. Uh, personally, I've had clients in the past who before leveraging Health Predict did a lot of these calculations actually through Excel. And I even uh, saw a client um, who actually tried to build integrations into or, or out of Excel and pulling information from a different system. While it was impressive, I, I, as you can imagine, it didn't go very well because Excel is really not meant for that. There's other sources of information that are really key for reliability to bring in, such as data from historians, OSI Pi historians, uh, bringing in information from CMMS into the Health and Predict application. That's what drives a lot of these readings that we're seeing here. And we're gonna to talk to some of these calculations and models that we have for this specific asset. So as a reliability engineer, I can automatically see from opening up this application, the health, criticality, and risk of this piece of equipment. Health being it has information, it brings in information such as meter readings, um, OSI Pi tag data, how many work orders are opening up against this asset, Maybe it's even the age of the equipment that can uh, act as a contributor, as we see down here below, with a certain weight that contributes to this overall health score. Now let's go ahead and move on to uh, other, other scoring message that as a reliability engineer, I would want to be able to calculate. Let's look at criticality. So we're analyzing the potential risks that this, that a failure could have to our operations. Uh, what are some of the key factors that contribute to this criticality score? Now, each of these scores are done differently for each asset class, maybe even each site, plant, organization, and it could just depend on what data is available for this asset class. But here is where you can see a breakdown of what contributes to that overall score. And this again helps when creating that entire story of what's happening with this piece of equipment. And so here we have some of those factors that lead to that overall risk, which tells us that probability of a high impact failure. As we scroll over, this is just a great example of when we don't have a data set, we'll see nothing show up. And this is a actually a model that we uh, use for this application uh, called end of life. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Uh, the effective age, which essentially takes that install date and looks at the overall health of the piece of equipment, giving you a calculation of the effective age. We don't have that configured for this demo. And when is the next preventative maintenance? This is pulling in information from Maximo. And then a maintenance to a maintenance to replacement ratio. Now, oftentimes within the role of a reliability engineer, I'm gonna want to assess, okay, is it more costly to maintain this piece of equipment or to replace the piece of equipment? And so this is a ratio that helps reliability assess that. And lastly, we have another one of our predictive models that we have running against this asset to predict the next failure. One last thing to point out, a part of this is we also have a drill down that we've configured for this asset that shows the asset his, or the health of this asset over a period of time and has an overlay of, of different factors that contributed to this. And this is just a nice visualization that helps. For example, if we wanted to look at a anomalous temperature reading coming in, how did that affect the overall health of this asset? We could do so using this visualization. So now that we've, we've covered some of the key calculations that 
a reliability engineer would use in their day-to-day and how they're calculated. Let's talk about some of the machine learning we can begin to apply once Maximo is that single source of truth for all this data. And so here's where a reliability engineer can really begin to start asking five key questions. If we look in the top left, this is an example of um, the, the visuals we're seeing here are actually several different models that we're running against the data we've collected that tell us, that answer these questions, such as based off of past asset history, what's the estimated time I have before the next failure? And this can be broken down for different failure modes. And for this one, we're just having uh, the pumps completely stopping. For So a complete shutdown, what's the estimated time to failure? What probability that a given asset will fail within a prediction window? And this can typically be anywhere from 15, 20, 60 day period. On the right hand side, we have the question of how far from a normal condition is this asset performing? And below we have uh, visualizations that map to failure probability and anomaly detection where we can see how this has changed over a period of time. On the bottom left, we have factors that contribute to the overall failure. So as a reliability engineer, I wanna know what are the main contributors to this failure? And what are the what is the logic that led this model to that decisioning? And so here we can see that failure analysis tree that contribute to what looks like high vibration readings being the main cause of the anomalous readings within this piece of equipment. Again, this is, this is key information that as I'm going through all the data available to me, I can begin making these assumptions, making these conclusions that this, this, is, this is what's causing this asset not to perform normally. And then lastly, how close to the end of life is this piece of equipment? So we can look across the asset classes and look at similar, and here we can just see the information of this model here. We can look at the retirement and the age for similar assets. And from there, this model can actually tell you when this asset is gonna reach the end of its life. And I think it's important to mention here that what we're seeing is essentially the visualizations of the machine learning models that we're running in the background. Whether that be a model template that IBM provides out of the box, we call our out of the box templates for Maximo, the SROM library, or through custom models. We have several clients here today that uh, when going through this exercise, we found, okay, they, they have enough data or maybe sometimes they don't to populate a lot of these supervised learning models. And so in that case, there's other techniques we can use um, and a great example of that is these models that we see here are really fed by analyzing operational data that has been labeled with failures. And this is what we use to train those machine learning models. And so in a scenario where a company, for example, maintains their equipment and they don't wait for an equipment to fail before executing maintenance, they may not have uh, relevant data that relates the operational performance to a failure. And so there, there are other techniques and models we can use to inform engineers if an asset is performing in normal condition. And anomaly detection is a great example of that, where we can provide unsupervised learning to detect these anomalies. So with that, let's, uh, and again, this is just to visualize the machine learning models. And there's a, a tool within Maximo called Watson Studio, which a lot of data scientists build these models and it has all the tools, capabilities for them to do so as well. I wanna talk briefly about this asset timeline because there's some great examples that I've seen in the past that where this asset timeline has been used. So as a reliability engineer, I want to have a holistic view of my assets history. I wanna look back to be able to know what inspections, work orders, failures, preventive maintenance have been completed in the past. And what that can do is can help inform me in what's happening today. And for example, uh, we, we did a, a POC, a proof of concept a while back on a conveyor motor, whereby looking at past history of work orders, we found that a new motor had been installed. And quickly following that installation is when 
we started noticing the motor showed sign of high vibration readings and triggered that anomaly detection model that we saw before. Now, by looking at this timeline as a reliability engineer, I can begin to associate that past work to the triggered anomalous score and then ensure that we move, if you look right here, we see that we have preventive maintenance after a predicted failure date. So we can move that preventive maintenance schedule up. We can, we can create a work order to assess the incorrect install of that motor and make sure that this asset incurs no, no failure. And this is a very proactive way in which we can reduce overall downtime by having all of this information populated into Maximo and having Maximo act as that single pane of glass. So I hope that gives everyone who viewed this call today a good, a good story in which uh, we're, we're all uh, here at IBM or working with our clients to create uh, for each and every client that we work with. Uh, so again, uh, thank you for watching. And if there's any questions, feel free to, to put that in the chat and I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, if not, have a great day and I'll see you in future videos.